took this photo earlier this year when I was driving around Allswater. The main road sort of behind us and Allswater is sort of down, down in this valley somewhere and then go off through Kirkstone Pass somewhere over there and that takes you down to Windermere. So it's a nice little photograph. So let's have a look at the materials. Uh, so some people have asked me about the palette, so it's it's basically starting off with Cotman watercolours, right, and then I'll squeeze them on, leave them at least overnight, maybe a couple of days sometimes until they go rock hard, and then if I pick, say, this lemon yellow, I make sure it's at least the width of the brush wide, and it wants to be quite deep as well. See that way, even though it's dry. With a damp brush, I can just go quickly like that, and I can get plenty of colour on it. So each one, I always do at least. Now this is about just short of um, two inches wide. It's the large Run Ranson Hake, 45 mil. So at least that wide, and they're like uh, they're basically like large pans. Then, so even though they're bone dry, a damp brush will get plenty of colour on the brush. So the colours are as usual. Always arranged in the same way, so I know exactly where they are. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. Three brushes, I've got a three quarter inch flats, number three rigger, and the, as I say, the large run ransom hike. I've cut the handle off because I'm just, I don't, I couldn't get used to the short handle. I um, also sometimes use a piece of plastic card, um, scraping out rocks, things like that. We've got the water and 15 by 11 Fabriano, 130 pound cold pressed paper, and it's clipped to a 9mm police applied. So it's going to stay solid and not move around. The use is the uh, tea towel up there drying. So, one more quick look at the uh, photograph and then we can get started. So, I'm going to start off with the uh, big brush. And just a bit of water on the paper just to stop it from crinkling. I don't want too much water. I'm not doing a very big sky, so just a bit of raw sienna. Bring that down a bit. Clean the brush, and then I'm just going to go a bit of ultramarine. A bit of ultramarine, a bit of Payne's grey, just pop that in something like, something like that. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop a few little clouds in. I'm just drawing it where I know the, the, the hills are going to be, so I'm going to fairly sharp profile to it. It's not going to soften off too much. I'll show you what I mean. So something like, see it's quite a, a sharp edge to it. It would have softened off a bit too much with uh, all that water. Something like so, just a little bit of, um, maybe a bit too much there. A bit of green, just to suggest that bit of grass in the distance. All this is very, uh, very soft. No, no real detail. At this sort of distance. And then I might even just take a take a clean damp brush now and just bring that down to a sort of no thickness. Because what I'm after. Get ready for the next layer that's going to go in. Get 
down. Just going to dry that a little bit. And then, reason being, what I've got now, put a few sort of trees in. Uh, again, same colours, raw sienna, ultramarine, a bit of lemon yellow. Let's just pop a few little, little trees in there. Just using the corner of the brush. Something like something like that. I'm just getting a sort of level. Maybe just a little bit darker, some slightly darker stuff in front of that. That's the look of that. Now in front of that, we've got some nice bit of grass. So I'm just going to go lemon yellow, a bit of raw sienna, and just pull this straight across to about there. Now the road's going to come round like that, so I'm not too worried about going any further. There's a, um, in the grass, there's a bit of, bit of mud and stuff. So let's have a bit of, bit of burnt umber as well as the, as well as the yellow. And anyway, just keep varying it as you come across. Now the brush is fairly, fairly dry, you can see how it curls up, the drier it gets the more it curls up. That allows me to get plenty of variation as I come across. I'm just going to pull this paper tight, it's just stretched lightly so. Because I wet it all over, see how it hasn't crinkled, even though it's not the thickest paper in the world. Um, what I might do is put this, put this wall in. So I want dark colours now, so I'm going, I haven't cleaned the brush because I'm going dark. No need to, burnt umber, ultramarine. I mean, let's, let's stick these, let's stick this wall down there. It's something like that. Raw sienna, burnt on back, ultramarine. I'm just laying the foundations there. This sort of stone, stone wall, and this sort of goes off. Up and over. There's even like a little sort of like fence post or something just there. With it. And a bit dark. See as it dries, as it dries you can put another layer on and it goes even darker then. See look, that's going darker. And then we'll say scrape a few uh just scrape a few little rocks in, see? And like another bits of stone and stuff. Mm. 
to try and keep it as sort of as possible as it goes off into the distance. That'll do. As long as you just give the sort of impression of just paint over anything you don't like. I mean on this side, that's let's just switch to the rigger. Switch to the rigger and now this is a bit drier. I might just pop. A little, um, just put that little tree in. Not much detail in it, but it all helps. Now then, just the other side of this fence now, we've got a bit more grass, so let's go a bit raw sienna, lemon yellow. We've got some grass coming down there now. In there like that. Now I'm going to stick the road in there. So I'm going to go same colour as the sky. Uh, let's go sort of ultramarine. Pain's grey. It sort of starts over there and it just sweeps around like that, doesn't it? Something like that. And then on the other side is like a like a hedgerow thing. I don't want much water now, it's fairly dry. So back to that sort of like a brown hedge type thing. So I'm gonna just pop that up there. Something like that. And below, below that we've got a bit more grass. Lemon yellow. Plain grey. A bit more grass. Ultramarine. Coming down there. Stick a bit of mud down there as well. more mud and you can even just have a few little not too many because I don't want to I've done a bit of scraping there you can you can do too much it just sort of ruins the effect of it a bit um how's that looking Make this a bit darker, a bit darker down there, I think. Just darken this a bit more. And I think, just emphasize that, um, that little fence post on the left there. A little bit more, so I'm just going to go for a dark colour burnt umber, ultramarine. Let's 
Let's try we do this again. Here we go. It's like a few little, a few little fence posts in there. Switch to the rigger. Just get some dark colour on it. And then a few little just bits of branches and twigs. Not branches, but grasses and whatnot. Just by the river, all them roadside there. A few more on there. Just get your finger in, scuff it up a bit. Fingernail a few in. And just something lying there and there on there. Just scuff it up. Just the idea of just something. Pretty loose lying around. And I think just on the horizon there, let's put a little little figure walking off. So we got his little head. Actually, let's stick to them and have another one down there as well. Two people just walking over the uh, over the brow of the hill. Give it a quick dry. with some shadows. There's no real shadows in the photo but I'm just going to stick some in anyway. If we imagine the lights coming from left to right so it's already catching these bits there of the rocks and stone. So let's make a shadow colour. Um, again it's just a bit of burnt umber, ultramarine, Same colours from the sky really. And you're making a sort of grey colour, grey shadowy colour. Um, and then obviously if you imagine like there's a big tree just off the uh, off the scene there, off the edge of the scene, and then you've got the shadow coming right across, straight across the road like that. A few more down there. That feels particularly strong. So let's have a closer look at it. So here's our finished painting. Let's uh, have a quick look at the photograph. You can see I haven't changed much on the composition. We've got our sort of hazy little sky up there. I've just used um, ultramarine and Payne's grey. And then just at the very top of the hill Use the same colours and then introduced a bit of raw sienna just to hint at some green grass here on coming down 
and you can see that uh, I lightened it at the bottom then so you could see the profile of the trees then in the, in the sort of next layer coming forward as we moved across for our little tree and with a rigger brush you can see it makes it look like sort of uh, misty down in the valley type of effect For our stone wall, get it in nice and dark and then a few quick scrapes with the card helps give that effect of, of sort of rocks and stone in the wall, making it smaller and smaller as we go off into the distance. And our two little figures on the brow of the hill. And then a few shadows on the road always make make it look quite nice. Breaks it up and help try and create a bit of light. That's my quick impression of the, the road to Alls Water. I hope you like that. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.